In this presentation, we will look at 55 miles to the gas pump by Annie Pralks through the deconstruction point of view. The deconstruction school of literary criticism is different from the formalist and new critics, as well as the reader response strategist. When reading a story through the deconstruction point of view, the reader believes that literary works do not yield just one interpretation because words and phrases themselves have multiple meanings and interpretations. As a deconstructionist, the reader seeks to show how a literary work is internally conflicted and contradictory, and how it seems to destabilize meanings rather than establish them. A deconstructionist will focus on the gaps and ambiguities in the literary work. 55 Miles to the Gas Pump by Annie Pralks is about a couple that lives separate lives. Rancher Croom, a grungy and lethargic man, is drunk on a regular basis. One day, while Rancher Croom is very drunk, he travels to a cliff several hours from their house. Meanwhile, Mrs. Croom breaks into their locked attic. She discovers mutilated bodies of women and recognizes them from the missing ads in the newspaper. As a deconstructionist, the reader focuses on two areas, what is in the text and what is not in the text. When looking at what is in the text, a deconstructionist focuses on unexpected relationships that at first seem insignificant to the story, but ultimately undermine or confuse the argument. The reader will also focus on specific words and ideas in the literary work that are inconsistent and contradict the rest of the story. The first example of contradiction in 55 Miles to the Gas Pump is the description of Mr. Croom. He is described as a quick-footed dancer, but he is also a sloppy drunk man. This is contradictory because a drunk man often stumbles and falls. They are not quick-footed dancers. When reading this through the eyes of a deconstructionist, you might ask questions similar to these. Is Prox trying to convey Mr. Croom as a productive sober man during the day that drinks his life away at night? Is Prox purposely demonstrating internal conflict in the story to represent Mr. Croom's unstable mindset? An example of inconsistency within Prox's story is the syntax in the first and second paragraphs. The first paragraph is faster paced than the second, and the thoughts are more sporadic. This highlights Mr. Croom's fast paced, careless lifestyle and self destructive nature. The second paragraph, which is slower paced and more coherent than the first, highlights Mrs. Croom's self-assured and generally calm nature. These inconsistent choices of syntax exemplify the differences between Mr. and Mrs. Croom. When reading this from the deconstructionist point of view, you might ask something like, how is Mr. and Mrs. Croom's marriage successful when they are two very different people? Another example of contradiction in 55 Miles to the Gas Pump is the last sentence. The simple statement from Mrs. Croom's point of view when you live a long way out, you make your own fun, follows the dramatic events of Mr. Croom's presumable suicide and Mrs. Croom's discovery of the murdered woman. The tone is completely calm, while the rest of the story is somewhat harried. The syntax also contradicts the long, convoluted sentences of the previous two paragraphs. As a deconstructionist, you might ask, does Prox purposely change the tone of the last sentence to exemplify the conflicting morals between the reader and the characters who live a long way out? When reading literary works from the deconstructionist point of view, it is important to not only look at what is in the text, but also at what is not in the text. You must carefully consider what the author does not explicitly state and situations that are not included in the work. They must be analyzed in regards to how they would affect the reader and society as a whole had they been included. The title 55 Miles to the Gas Pump is the first example of ambiguity within the text. While at first the reader may think this story is about the abuse and murder of women and the conflicts in a supposed healthy relationship, in reality the story is about geographic distance. It focuses on a lack of civilization and what occurs when people do not have a community to interact with. Understanding this ambiguity in the title is crucial to understanding the true meanings of the short story. A second example of ambiguity in 55 Miles to the Gas Pump is the lack of specification of Mr. Croom's transportation to the cliff. The text states Rancher Croom at night galloping drunk over the dark plain, turning off at a place he knows to arrive at a canyon brink where he dismounts. Galloping and dismounting describes a horse, but turning off is used to describe a car on a road. The title 55 Miles to the Gas Pump also seems to allude to a car rather than a horse. 
This is an example of how words and phrases have multiple meanings and create uncertainty within a literary work. After Rancho Croom reaches the cliff, he looks down on Tumble Rock, waits, then steps out, parting the air with his last roar, sleeves surging up windmill, windmill arms, jeans riding over boot tops, but before he hits, he rises again to the top of the cliff like a cork in a bucket of milk. It is generally assumed that at this point in the story, Rancho Croom has committed suicide. However, this is not explicitly stated. This leads to doubt and confusion. As a deconstructionist, the reader can make one of four assumptions. The phrase, steps out and rising again to the top of the cliff, could mean, one, that Rancho Croom stumbles off the cliff and dies, and his body bounces off the sharp rocks at the bottom, or two, that Rancho Croom jumps off the cliff and dies, and his body bounces off the sharp rocks at the bottom. Three, after becoming drunk and standing at the edge of the cliff, looking down at his possible death, Rancher Croom comes out of his drunken disillusionment like a cork in a bucket of milk and vows to start anew. Finally, four, Rancher Croom hangs himself, and cork in a bucket of milk represents his body bouncing up after the rope is pulled taut. A deconstructionist would conclude that this part of the story is vague and leads to multiple possible interpretations. A fourth example of ambiguity within 55 miles to the gas pump is Mrs. Croom's discovery of the dead woman in the attic. It is not explicitly stated how the woman died or how they even arrived in the first place. However, we do know that Mrs. Croom recognized the woman from their missing woman photographs in the newspaper. After reading the description of the woman, some desiccated as jerky in much the same color, some moldy from lying beneath roof leaks, and all of them used hard cover with hairy handprints, the marks of boot heels, some bright blue with remnants of paint used on the shutters years ago, one wrapped in newspaper nipple to knee. A deconstructionist might ask, did Mr. Croom murder these women? And since Mrs. Croom's reaction to the dead woman is anticlimactic, did she already know about the murders? When you live a long way out, you make your own fun is the final example of ambiguity in 55 miles to the gas pump. From a formalist perspective, this statement is definitive, but for a deconstructionist, this statement provokes multiple thoughts and questions. First, a deconstructionist is prompted to wonder about the lack of law enforcement. Is this why Mr. Croom was willing to murder a woman? Because he knew he would get away with the crime? Second, maybe because Mr. and Mrs. Croom are so isolated from society, they simply have a different definition of fun. Third, maybe this statement is Mrs. Croom's way of defending her husband's actions. For a deconstructionist, these thoughts lead to other questions, such as, what exactly is Mrs. Croom's definition of having fun? It appears that she is almost pleased to find the dead bodies. Does she also have a hobby that is seen as psychopathic? In addition, is this all just a sick game of hide-and-seek that Mr. and Mrs. Croom play to stay entertained? Could Mr. and Mrs. Croom be playing a game in which he kills and rapes women and she has to figure out what he is doing? Finally, does Mrs. Croom remain calm because she knows she cannot do anything to stop Mr. Croom because of their isolation? When reading 55 Miles to the Gas Pump by Annie Prox as a deconstructionist, the reader will find several contradictions and inconsistencies within the text, as well as many ambiguities. As we saw in this presentation, they provoke a variety of questions and thoughts in the reader and lead to multiple conclusions about the story. As deconstructionists, we recognize that there is no one correct interpretation of the literary work. Due to the inconsistencies and ambiguities present in this short story, all of the interpretations and conclusions we discuss in this presentation are correct, and there are certainly other ideas we did not discuss that are also correct.